Welcome back to the channel and continuing on our series looking at Assassin's Creed. Obviously we've been looking at Origins in the last few weeks, but I thought I would share this documentary that Ubisoft put out just um, a couple of weeks ago. Can you believe it's 10 years since the first Assassin's Creed was launched? And uh, boy oh boy, it's gone a long way since then. This documentary really covers the community that has been developed around the Assassin's Creed franchise. And I think you'll find it interesting. I find it completely inspiring. And it just shows um, how much creativity the gamers um, of any franchise have. So guys, enjoy the video. And be warned, you might need some tissues towards the end. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for supporting the channel. And we will catch you next time. There's the concept of obviously the tenets of the creed. You have stay your blade from the flesh of an innocent, hide in plain sight, and never compromise the brotherhood. I think the third one especially resonates with a lot of the fan community because we see ourselves as that brotherhood. Think about people who follow soccer teams. Everybody feels that sense of belonging. The series showed how easily you can use history as kind of a paintbrush. Really kind of sort of hard to express just how much I really appreciate it. There's always going to be people who just don't get what you're into. Find like-minded people who are going to be into the same thing as you. People from different walks of life come together for one particular thing. Our love for Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed shaping my life. I, I'll definitely say it has. I'm here as a result of Assassin's Creed. I was in Nigeria till I was 14. Then I moved over to the UK. Uh, I finished school, I got my degree in economics, and then I started working in a bank. And I was fine doing that for a little bit. And then, um, this is gonna sound extremely cliche, but I played Assassin's Creed 2 and then Brotherhood. And those games really hooked me. The memory I have was running on the rooftops of Venice, and a soundtrack, just ambient noise, just kicking in. And I thought to myself at that point, I want to do this for a living. I want, I want to understand how this becomes a thing, right? Like, what are the moving pieces? What are the different things that make a video game? So I started making YouTube videos on Assassin's Creed multiplayer, sort of like tips and tricks. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Escoblade, and yeah, we've got to 100 videos. It's uh, almost unbelievable, actually. When I was I getting more involved out. in the community and a few people at Ubisoft Montreal took notice. They saw my videos and the creative director at the time sent us an email going, we're working on a new project. Do you want to be the community developers on it? And my mind just went, Pfft. I was like, what, seriously? So that was when I took the drastic decision <laughs> to change careers uh, from, from working in banking and finance to working in video games. We have passionate fans all over the world. Like, the passion is off the charts. Là, il y a un truc qui est énorme. C'est les, les synchronisations. Assassin's Creed, pour moi, c'est un univers. Ça ne s'attache pas simplement au jeu, ça ne s'attache pas simplement aux livres, aux films récemment, aux, aux BD. C'est un univers dans sa globalité. Ça partageait les dix dernières années de ma vie et aujourd'hui, je, je ne me vois pas vivre sans Assassin's Creed. Pour moi, on a la meilleure communauté au monde. Toutes les personnes qui gravitent autour de, ces fran de cette franchise sont des gens passionnés. Nous, ici, nous sommes à Fort Ardietti et c'est une fortezza à Ponti sul Mincio, qui est un commune vicino au lago di Garda, dans le nord de l'Italie. Eh, io ormai sono già da quando è nata l'associazione che voglio e uso voglio perché è necessario fare un video veramente fatto in maniera cinematografica dell'associazione. Tutta la, 
il panorama? Di... L'associazione è nata diciamo quasi per gioco e abbiamo visto tra di noi che eravamo veramente in tanti ad essere appassionati di Assassin's Creed e in tanti cosplayer nello stesso posto. Ora l'associazione ha all'incirca più di 100 membri, di cui la maggior parte sono attivi e con costumi. Assassin è una saga che ci permette di rivivere, anche se in maniera videoludica, eh, periodi storici che noi non potremmo mai rivivere, se non con una macchina del tempo. Eh. Yeah. Historical tourism, right? We make sure that we're as historically accurate as we can be with regards to the location that we're going to, the setting and the time period. That said, it's still a video game, so we're able to take some liberties to ensure that we make a video game. For me, uh, Assassin's Creed is a historical game. I mean, you know, it's, it's a game that conveys a lot of historical information in it. I teach a course on the representations of history in video games, and so um, it's a game that I've used in, in, my, uh, in my courses. You know, I'd heard uh, from other people that Dr. Trepanier was uh, a difficult professor, so I went into it kind of expecting that it would be difficult. To me, Assassin's Creed is a series that shows how you can paint a picture with history that might otherwise seem really dry and, and, and boring and distant uh, and make it seem really immediate and uh, relevant uh, in a way that's exciting. Hey Nick, how are you doing? It's good to see you, man. Come here. Come here. I told you, man, Anatolian foodways are not going to get you anywhere. It's video games. Video games it's, for the future. That's, that's basically what's been happening right now. <laughs> I started seeing details in the game that were historically accurate, but that are not part of popular representations of that time period. So you're talking about the sea shanties, for example, the, the songs that the, the sailors sing in Black Flag or the fact that the pirates, when they landed on an island, they would engage in hunting, for example. That's something that would not be prominent in a pirate movie, for example. But if you ask somebody like my colleague who works on 18th century Caribbean, for him, that's something that's very well documented. I don't know, it's really kind of sort of hard to express, like, just how much I really much appreciate it, because it's like, back during my high school days, history was like my number one class. Not related to Assassin's Creed is I need to pay rent, he needs to pay rent, and we want cheap rent. <laughs> we also like Assassin's Creed, so now we don't have to pay for one copy and we can share it. I'm not in this moving equation, it's just these two. So I met him through the Assassin's Creed, uh, you do it. So I was one of the people who uh, was contacted, and apparently so was he. I'm a big fan. I've played all the games. I'm excited for Syndicate, like a lot of people. I think I need to have a lot more practice if I want to be an assassin or a ruck or anything like that. Then it was kind of great because we realized we had a mutual friend, which is Hakeem. And <laughs> I knew Hakeem since childhood. We used to play video <laughs> games together in my apartment and everything. You remember those good and old 64? <laughs> no, it's not my fault. Parkour is a big part of the Assassin's Creed franchise. So I started training myself. And then when I got to college, I studied professional theater. And part of the curriculum was, if you get injured, you're out. Uh, move your boxes back to... So I stopped doing it. And I kind of lived vicariously through not only the games, but people who would dress up as the assassins and do some parkour stuff. And at the time, there wasn't a lot. And then uh, Devin Supertramp came out with his uh, Assassin's Creed one video where it's Altair and the dude's just doing parkour and I was just like, I need to start doing this again. When I made our original Assassin's Creed parkour video, I believe it was in 2012, it was solely just a fan project. I was a big fan of the video game and I was like, I want to do a live action version of this. I would have never imagined how big it would have exploded, but when we uploaded it on YouTube, within the first week, it had 8 million views. From that experience, Ubisoft actually reached out to us and they were like, we would love to work with you on promoting the movie.
after we did the first Assassin's Creed video, it was funny because we were driving down the road. This was actually my friend driving down the road, and he saw um, two kids, like eight, ten-year-olds. They were climbing a stop sign, and they and the, the driver he he asked, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" And they're like, "We're doing parkour because we saw it in this Assassin's Creed parkour video on YouTube." And then, I mean, with every parkour video that we do with Assassin's Creed, we always try and shoot it at the location that the video game takes place. When the Assassin's Creed Unity um, video game happened, which is based in Paris, we made sure we based it in there. And we're using social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, to let people know where we're at and how fans could be involved. Allora, il parkour è una cosa che, che noi eh, odiamo e amiamo contemporaneamente. <ride> e adesso io voglio fare un appello al, costru Prego. al costruttore e al creatore dei costumi di Assassin's Creed. Perché se lui viene a casa mia, gli metto addosso i costumi e gli faccio fare parkour. I have to admit, at first I didn't get it. Why would you do that? Wait. So you're going to go buy a lot of material, you're then going to be hunched up in your room for ages and not see the sun and make this costume. Why? And I started to understand it because what they see in the game really speaks to their personality. L'importante per queste uniformi è che siano realistiche, ma al tempo stesso eh, devono essere per stand e con uniformi da rievocazione vera e propria era impossibile. I was always in awe of those who would go out of their way to create things, right? So it's like these are people who see their favorite character in the video game and then go, right, I am going to make a costume. I can't so to a straight line to save my life and then people are building whole costumes of like Ezio and all these other assassins. Allora, beh, mi sono innamorata di Assassin's Creed mentre vedevo mio fratello giocare al primo capitolo della saga. Era fantastico perché vedevo questo personaggio che era bello, un assassino buono però, diciamo. Poi hanno iniziato, ho iniziato a guardare i costumi, ad appassionarmi uh, appunto ai personaggi. È arrivato Ezio e io mi sono innamorata di Ezio. Tutto, io devo diventare lui. Mia madre aveva fatto il costume di Ezio, io l'avevo aiutata con gli accessori, ad esempio la fibbia della cintura e queste cose qua. E, poi mia madre è mancata e quindi ho dovuto imparare a farli io, i costumi. Poi ho conosciuto i ragazzi e abbiamo fondato l'associazione e adesso per me Assassin's Creed è l'associazione. We get a few stories where um, fans have gone through a tough period and Assassin's Creed has been there for them. Uh, we've had a few stories of people beating cancer or beating, you know, like sometimes almost terminal illnesses and they've been playing Assassin's Creed through that time and it's, it's really got them through uh, It's really got them through a tough time. In January 2008, exactly, I had a grave maladie. It's really... From my point of view, and I think that my wife also shares it, we live. Since we are at Ronage, we live. And so, I was really at the top. The game came out in April 2008. From the first second, from the first instant in which I could play, au jeu, ben voilà, chaque fois que je jouais, j'oubliais ma maladie et j'avançais comme ça. C'est un lien très fort avec la, avec la franchise. Hi. On est bien, ah, on est bien. Cette année, on fête les 10 ans de la franchise. Ce serait de me rendre à Montréal, ça, ce serait le... Enfin, c'est un rêve absolu. There are definitely a lot of people who don't understand the concept of video games, but also in terms of like working in video games. I get it a lot. Um, for instance, uh, my dad didn't get it at all. 
he was like, why would you, you just play these things for fun. Why would you want to work in video games, right? Like, you know, he was an African parent and they're very traditional. You know, you, you, you do medicine or you work in a bank or you're an accountant or you're an engineer, right? You do those things partly because it's a sense of pride for them. And video games was just something that I played in the summer, right? It was like, it was a reward. You did well in school. Here's your Nintendo system or whatever. I knew I was taking a risk of covering myself with ridicule because a lot of people in academia don't take video games very seriously. I got a research fellowship. I'm gonna Congratulations, be spending, man. Thank you. I'm gonna be spending, be spending the year in Amsterdam. Whoa, I see, I see. 25 years from now, 30 years from now, being laughed at for liking video games will be as rare as being laughed at for liking cinema. There's always gonna be that group of people just like, I don't get why you're into this, and my advice to anyone who's listening to this is just like, ignore them, because they're not gonna understand it anyways, so don't waste your time. Find like-minded people who are going to be into the same thing as you, and that's how I've always uh, approached it. More than one pair. Hey guys. Ashley. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, this is when you take e andiamo a vedere un po' come si allena Angela nel combattimento. Abbiamo i mitici di Unit che stanno scaldando Angela che è già stanca probabilmente. È bello perché tante persone che magari si sentivano eh, erano timide o pensavano di non essere, dicono sempre all'altezza di entrare nel nostro gruppo, in realtà poi ci conoscono e si trovano, si trovano bene. particolare soprattutto ti, ti fa rendere conto di poi alla fine quanto un gioco unisca le persone o comunque quanto dovunque vai hai persone con le tue stesse passioni, le tue stesse, i tuoi stessi obiettivi, i tuoi stessi sogni e quindi ci aiuta in questo. My goal is still to do like these big kind of blockbuster Hollywood films, but YouTube's been this amazing avenue to get there and especially our Assassin's Creed parkour videos, those have been huge for our growth and giving us those opportunities to work with a brand that we absolutely love, but also taking us around the world to tell those stories. One of the best things is being able to bring people over here just to meet, you know, meet those people that are a lot of the times behind the scenes, right? And there's like producers, there's programmers, there's level designers, there's animation people. You know, they don't always get to meet the fans. So them getting to have that FaceTime with them is just, it's, it's fantastic, it's so good. Je suis en admiration. <laughs> Je suis en... Avoir des développeurs qui ont pu avoir cette idée, c'est énorme. Les, les détails que vous avez, le rendu que vous avez dans ce jeu est, est tout simplement ahurissant. On pourrait passer des heures à le regarder, Unity. Non, 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 je fais juste un... Non, 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 je voulais juste faire un déplacement rapide à la Sainte-Chapelle. Okay. Vous montrer la Sainte-Chapelle. Claudio, on a quelque chose à, à t'annoncer. En fait, euh, euh, tu venais à Montréal. Mais non. Oui. Mais non. Oui. La, dans dix jours. Mais non. Oui. Fait que, on t'invite, dans le fond, à, à Montréal non. avec euh, rencontrer l'équipe du CERF. Mais non. Ouais. Je peux vous serrer dans les bras? Mais, là, mais oui. Oh non. Fait que, ben, c'est ouais, ça, c'est l'équipe du CERF. De... Mais oui. I'm so fond of you too. I only see you in pictures. Hey. Un studio comme ça, on n'a pas la possibilité d'ouvrir les portes du studio. Coucou, je suis un grand fan de la franchise. J'ai envie de, j'ai envie de vous serrer tous dans les bras parce que grâce à vous, j'ai pu m'en sortir.
Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, welcoming me. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you for you inspire. You inspire everybody yeah. here. That's why whenever, whenever the community people tell me I'm living the dream, and I'm like, I'm just having fun. You know, I'm I'm doing what I love to do, what I really want. I set out to do. I know not a lot of people get that opportunity, so like I'm extremely grateful for where I am. It's, it's awesome. It's a real life brotherhood. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But that's Definitely. why this franchise is so uh, compelling to to so many. I think. Yeah. There is, there is a spirit, there is something yeah. that makes the group, the, the, the people around it, mm. feel like we are all important for mm. others. And we're, we're a family. Yes. I, I like that. I definitely like that.